Okay, should I start? Mm -hmm. Okay. Hey guys, um, I'm Morgan Schall. I'm now a junior on the Cornell University gymnastics team. Some of you guys might know me, some of you don't. <laughs> um, and I wish I was here for the college panel today. Elise has been my physical therapist for a couple of years, um, but unfortunately I'm already back at school. So I put together this video for you. And sorry if my eyes look down at the screen. <laughs> Don't want to forget anything. <laughs> um, so my senior year of high school, I was diagnosed with bilateral spondylolysis, which are two stress fractures in my back. Um, my orthopedist, who is actually a gymnast at Yale University, told me that given my age and the fact that this was the second time my injury came back, I had it once when I was in seventh grade and it completely healed. Um, but because of that, she told me that I was always gonna have this back issue for the rest of my life. So the stress fractures are healed, but they're still there. Um, so at this point, I had already committed to Cornell University, and I had to choose not to push through it my senior year of high school so that I could then compete in college, because had I pushed through it, the recovery would have been nine months to a year. As a gymnast, we deal with lots of injuries and ongoing pains, so it's really important to take care of yourselves in every way possible. Each person has their own, what I like to call, healthy living toolbox that keeps them in their best shape, both physically and mentally. For me, my toolbox encompasses adequate nutrition, daily physical therapy, exercises and rehab, ice baths after practice, which are no fun, <laughs> um, heating before practice and sometimes stim, which is a perk of college gymnastics. Um, and it, stim basically just helps loosen up your tight muscles. Um, and other tools I use are weekly massage therapy and making sure I give my body and mind a break. Each person's healthy living toolbox is different because each person has a different injury or problem. For example, some people can be a vegetarian and get enough meat or get enough energy from their diet to compete and train off of uh, that, but I've tried vegetarian and I can't. I simply just need the iron in order to, you know, be in the best shape that I possibly can, both in the classroom and out on the competition floor. Um, but back problems are a common issue in collegiate athletics as well, especially in gymnastics. I have teammates who have chronic back issues as well, but each person has different rehab exercises that they do um, because each person's actual problem is different. Uh, one of my mentors, for example, on the team, who just graduated this past year, had a chronic back issue and has guided me throughout these years uh, through exercises that don't aggravate my injury but still push me in the same way that um, the other girls are being pushed. Now I'm officially an upperclassman on the team, so last year and then in the next two years on the team, I'll be helping to pay it forward with the other girls on the team. Another thing I learned my freshman year is that I can't train pounding events every day, which is kind of hard because I specialize on floor and vault. <laughs> My body has matured over the years since club gym, and I now have this chronic back issue that I have to deal with. So during the season, I only do one routine a week and one tumbling endurance routine, one day of ball on the hard surface, and maybe another day like into the pit or resi mat um, for a soft landing, and then I compete on the weekends. I have two days a week where I just focus solely on rehab exercises, uh, tumble track and cardio before practice, either elliptical or bike. Uh, we call these on my team on off days, uh, and it's critical to helping me and my teammates keep our bodies in the as healthy as possible for the 10 straight weekends of competition plus postseason that we have um, during the second semester. It took me a long time to figure out this routine of like this healthy living toolbox I created. I had a setback my fall semester freshman year when I started getting nerve pain down my leg and unfortunately Advil didn't even help with that. But through mentors on the team, my trainer, and just myself being proactive and reaching out to my wonderful physical therapist, Elisa, at home and working with her over the past couple of years, I finally figured out a routine that works for me and allows me to not only continue competing, but to also excel at my sport. My freshman season, I competed every single weekend, and I actually got second at our IV championships on the floor, and I helped my team compete and win both ECAC, our conference championship, and the IV title that year as well.
Um, so just because you have like an injury doesn't mean that you can't figure out ways to overcome that. Um, this year, I unfortunately, completely tore my meniscus. <laughs> I know I'm a wreck. <laughs> and ended up having to get surgery. So I was out all season, but I'll definitely be back for next year. Um, so now I have P knee PT exercises that I have added to my toolbox um, and strength routines and daily icing and but when you let and so it's a lot but when you love something enough and are passionate about achieving your dreams and being part of something bigger than yourself with a group of girls and coaches that I now call family you do what you have to do everything in life is worth having takes work hard work and sacrifice and the things you do to keep your body and mind as healthy as possible both inside and outside of your sport are no exception to this don't ever doubt that you can't do it even with two permanent stress fractures, permanent but healed stress fractures in your back if there's a will there's a way it's important to be smart and proactive but also realistic being realistic means knowing that I simply can't do two floor routines a week like some of my teammates can. So the one floor routine I do do has to be quality and it has to really count. Quality over quantity is what we say on my team. And sometimes life doesn't go as planned, like getting surgery for example. So it's important to be able to adjust to these curveballs and to create a new path. But that new path can still lead you to the same destination and same goal that you originally had. Whether it's competing in college gymnastics, being a regional or national qualifier or champion, whatever it is, follow your passion. Because if you're willing to put in the work, you'll never go wrong. So I hope you guys have fun at the symposium. And I wish I was there in person to talk with all you lovely people. Um, but I hope you guys have a great summer and an awesome next year of gymnastics.